Hey, folks, comedian and writer Michelle Wolf brings her sharp humor to HBO in her debut stand-up special, Michelle Wolf, Nice Lady. Taped at the Skirball Center in New York City, this exclusive HBO special showcases Michelle's signature voice as she takes on a wide range of topics, including her surprising thoughts on feminism, Hillary Clinton, and more of life's everyday absurdities. Michelle Wolf, Nice Lady, premieres this Saturday, December 2nd at 9 p.m., only on HBO. We're also sponsored by Orbi. Wi-Fi is something you don't really think about until you don't have it or it's not working properly. Video buffering, Wi-Fi dead zones, everyone home for the holidays fighting for Wi-Fi. When did you last upgrade your Wi-Fi at home, huh? If you just want better Wi-Fi everywhere, check out an Orbi Wi-Fi system from Netgear. With Orbi, you'll enjoy super strong, fast, and more reliable whole home Wi-Fi from your basement to your backyard. Change your Wi-Fi world. Get an Orbi Wi-Fi system from Netgear. Visit netgear.com slash Orby. That's O-R-B-I. Yeah, let's do the show. All right, let's do this. How are you, what the fuckers? What the fuck buddies? What the fucking ears? What the fuck sticks? What the fuckettes? What's happening? I'm Mark Marin. This is my podcast, WTF. Welcome to it. How's everybody? Rob Hubel is on the show today. Rob has a uh, a series that he created and stars in. Do you want to see a dead body? It's on YouTube Red. I I didn't I you know I never had Rob on, but we turned out it turned out to be hilarious and had a great conversation. I got a real kick out of him. We we kind of had a good time me and the Hubel. So I'm a little uh, I'm a little. You know, bonkers, you know, moving, moving, man. I just, it's just like, it just never, and, and I have not touched the garage. The garage is, is like this preserved museum of me that is now just sitting out here by itself. The house is, uh, is getting emptier. Uh, it's, uh, I, I moved the fucking cats, which is no small deal. It's very odd. How cat-like I am, and I—I I know I talked about this, but I can't. It's very weird coming back to this house with no cats in it. I realize that I've been worried about this house for you know almost two decades because of those cats. What's going on with the cats? One of the reasons I could never leave the house was ever was the the cats. What about the outdoor cats? What about Boomer? Like when I went bankrupt and I was going through that divorce, I didn't, I didn't know how, if I had lost the house, how would I go anywhere? It would, how was, but Boomer was outside. I couldn't move Boomer. Well, that's over. But now the, the hat, this house has never had no cats in it. And it's weird because I can just leave the door open now. And, and, and every time I walk by it, I'm like, Oh shit. But nope, there's no cats in it. It's so weird. And there's almost no me in it. It's so fucking bizarre. And every it just seems like moving is never ending. This is a small house, but obviously I'm going to stay here in the garage for a bit. My house is not in that bad of shape. I just have to fix it up. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I think I might just maybe keep it as a cabin, maybe keep it as a workspace, maybe uh, just have the garage here and use it as the the office. I don't know. I don't know. I know that I have to use it for uh, an extended period of time. I don't know. There's. The most difficult thing I got to move is this garage and it has remained untouched. Anyways, today's show is uh, supported by the new Firefox web browser. You may have used Firefox before, but this is the new Firefox, which has been redesigned with a beautiful minimalist design. As part of the not-for-profit Mozilla, the new Firefox is powered by a cutting-edge engine, making it twice as fast as it was last year, and still more private, because the Internet waits for no one. Better yet, Firefox uses 30% less memory than Chrome, so other programs won't slow down during browsing, because that's the worst when that happens. Whether you've opened 10 or 1,000 tabs, switching between them is faster than ever with Firefox's new responsive engine. Firefox also offers one of the most powerful private browsing experiences with added traction protection. And because Firefox is part of the not-for-profit Mozilla, which is focused on making the Internet healthier, you're doing good by using it as well. That's right. When you use Firefox, you help Mozilla fight misinformation online, teach digital skills, make the comments section on blogs more human, and more. Firefox is free to use on any machine, including your phone or tablet. Fight corporate domination of the Internet by choosing the browser for people, not profit. Download at Firefox.com. That's Firefox.com. The new Firefox. 
fast for good. What I do want to reach out about here is that um, uh, somebody that we know and like a lot is dealing with something really tough right now. We want to, to lend a hand here. Barry Crimmins is a great comic and someone we've enjoyed having on this show. I did an episode with him back in like 2013, and then he was back on with Bobcat Goldthwait in 2015. And if you saw the documentary that Bob made about him, Call Me Lucky, you know Barry's story, that he's been a tireless advocate on behalf of victims of sexual abuse. Now, we found out that Barry's wife, Helen, who is an artist in her own right, very, a very good, uh, a great photographer, is in the middle of a cancer fight, and the cost of treatment has become uh, overwhelming. The copays alone are just staggering for the two of them, and it's just uh, it's tragic. It's really heavy what they're both going through, and with all the help that Barry has given to people in his life as an advocate and human rights activist, we figured we can help lift Barry and Helen up right now. If we if we can lift them up just a bit, that would be tremendous. If you go to Barry's Twitter page, you'll see the pinned tweet has a link to Helen's GoFundMe account. That's at Crimmins, C-R-I-M-M-I-N-S, on Twitter. Uh, someday we can hope to live in a country where they actually fix health care so that no one can ever be driven into financial peril because they got sick. But until that time, we're going to have to help each other. So let's help Barry and Helen out, okay? Uh, go to go to at Crimmins on Twitter and look at that pin tweet for that link to the GoFundMe so we can help uh, save Helen's life. Uh, so Godspeed, Barry and Helen. I'm sorry you're going through that, and I hope uh, I hope we can help out a little bit. So that's, uh, that's horrible, but, uh, but there is hope there. There is hope there. Uh, we've been in touch with Barry a bit. So I am, uh, in the middle of this move and, um, projecting a lot onto my cats and onto my own situation and wondering, you know, whether I can handle it, whether I deserve it, whether, you know, I, I should have just burrowed in here. But it was a, it's a trip to move those cats, man. You know, Monkey and LaFonda and me have been together for uh, for a long time, since 2004, 13 years. I've gone back and forth with Monkey to New York, and LaFonda has made that, that trip once. But this is the uh, really the only home outside of their childhood home in Astoria, Queens, where I found them in the, uh, in the alley that, that they've ever known. And uh, it, it was weird for me. Like, I, I think I was just, <laughs> it was getting sort of sad, just the, just the cats here. Yeah, as I took things out, and there was part of me that thought, well, maybe I could, um, you know, maybe they, maybe they just stay at the house when I'll just have them, I'll come over when I record and sleep here, and uh, and they'll just, I'll, they'll just live here. But then I realized that was ridiculous. So now I moved them, and they freaked out, but they, you know, they're gonna be all right. Everyone's gonna be all right. I'm having a hard time throwing stuff away. There's, uh, there's bits and pieces from different p- parts of my life. There's canned goods from my relationship to, you know, like from years ago. There's furniture and things from my marriages. It's just, it's a little, it's a little bit much. You know, it's like a, an emotional sarcophagi in there. <laughs> and, uh, and I think a, a new page is, is, it will be nice. So uh, you don't need to tell me that this is the busiest time of year. I know. You've got errands to run, gifts to buy, parties to attend, decorations to put up, and, of course, you have plenty of mailing and shipping to do. So let Stamps.com help you save time this holiday season. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your fingertips. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. Then the mailman picks it up. Stamps.com makes it easy. They'll send you a digital scale, which automatically calculates exact postage. Stamps.com will even help you decide the best class of mail every time. Print postage any day, any time of day, because Stamps.com is always open. I use Stamps.com right here at my house, and when I move all my stuff, I'll be able to do it at my new house, because Stamps.com is the post office that moves with you. And right now, you too can enjoy the Stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus postage, and a digital scale with out long-term commitments go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the home page and type in wtf that's stamps.com enter wtf so rob hubel uh has this great new series that he stars and i mentioned that he created it it's 
Do You Want to See a Dead Body? It's now on YouTube Red. And, and we had a great talk. I had a good time with him. It was fun. It's a fun one. Fun one with a funny guy. This is me and Rob Hubel. Now, what did you just say? Are you going to ask me about Glow? About the show I'm on? Yeah. How much you liked it? I haven't seen it yet. What, what the? <laughs> Everyone loves it, uh, but I, you know, I'm, okay. I'm that I, asshole. I've, I've seen so little of what you do. Uh, really. That's I, that's what I appreciate. I'm glad that we are all now at the point where, like, <laughs> where like my best friends, my best friend, I can say, like, yeah. man, I haven't seen it. I don't. There's so much. I on. can't. There's too. What much. do I owe you? I There's like you too much. You? I'm psyched that we're all making money. I hope. I hope. But I can't. I'm not going to watch your much. show. I, just, I do want to watch your show, though, because everybody loves it. I know we talked on a live one once before. Yeah, me and uh, Joe Latrulio. And, Joe uh, Latrulio. That was at the Steve... Um, Steve Allen Theater. Steve Allen Theater, yeah. Oh, it was a long time ago. Yeah, it was like five, six years ago. I don't it's know, long, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot has happened. Yeah. You have children? I do. I just yeah. Have, yeah, I got a one-year-old, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How's I'm, that? Uh, house parenting. <laughs> well, I mean, super how's easy. The kid, all right. Super easy. She's great. She's yeah. great. Yeah. It it was. It, we got off to a little bit of a rocky start. Uh, she came. Uh, she was very premature. Oh. Uh, yeah. So my advice, if you're having kids, is don't uh, have them prematurely. Okay. Uh, if you can avoid it. <laughs> Do you have control over that? <laughs> no, you don't. That's what they like. They how premature? She was very early. She was three months early. So, oh my uh, God! Did they have to put her in the thing? Yep, she was in the thing. She was in the little box for. Uh, I think that's the term. It's called a little the, thing. Yeah, they thing. put her in the thing. I'm making jokes about my baby that was premature. Um, but uh, they put her. It. They put her in the NICU in the little box for uh, four months, actually. Yeah. No so kidding. it was great. That was a big part of my last year. Yeah. It was intense, dude. It was very intense. But like, like, was it touch and go? Shit, um, shit or just... It's like, uh, not, not anymore. Like nowadays, it's sort of like the Matrix. Like it's very sci-fi what they can do now. Like this baby was born when the baby was born, and and you know we don't have to go into this for yeah. days and days. But like she was, uh, she was under two pounds. She oh was my... one pound. Oh my 15 god! Fifteen ounces. So you're looking at like a tiny little alien, you know. And what they do is they scoop them up and they uh, run down the hall with them with a bunch of doctors. And then they uh, they plug them into all of these um, machines and gadgets. Feeding and, them and everything. Yep. And uh, and nowadays insane. it uh, they can they can, you know, pull off miracles. So it's uh, it was it was, you know, it was intense. That's hard. But uh, yeah, it was really crazy. But I'm super psyched to have health insurance. <laughs> And uh, and now we have this awesome one year old, totally healthy baby. Really? Yeah. I mean, she has uh, the thing that we're waiting to catch up is just her lungs. Like when they're born that early, their lungs are like you know um, really? uh-huh. are really little. Uh-huh. So you know we can't like she's not going to climb Everest uh, tomorrow. But I'm not going to do that anyway. No. And uh, <laughs> there's no reason for her. There's to do no that. reason. And you don't for need to either. What we, you know? What no one has to. Do. What baby needs to be up on Mount Everest? I don't think you should pressure her to do you that. Know, kind although of thing. it would get a lot of likes. Oh yeah, it would get a lot of likes. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be cool. But uh, but other than the lungs, uh, she's all good. And then the lungs will catch up. Like uh, that's. You know, an, I'm like, happy for you. Yeah, that must have been crazy. So yeah. you and your wife are over at the hospital every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah oh yeah, my yeah. god. Yeah. Which is uh, super fun, tons of fun, not stressful on your marriage at all. And I've only been married, like, we got married like two years ago, two and a half years ago. And uh, I'm old, and uh, my wife is young, and we were like, whoa, well, oh, I'm old, and I'm going to die. How old so, are you? I'm 48. Really? Yeah. How old is she? She's thirty uh six, thirty seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it's not like yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not like no. a, a pervert. No. Yeah. She's not like twenty. Yeah. You know? Even then it would it be it, I don't know if that's No, like, no offense to forty eight year olds no, that are dating. It's not twenty year olds. Perverted. It's it's a little telling. It's on the cusp of yeah, you know I try to look at it, frame it more as like that's sort of a sad situation and <laughs> That's not going to end well. When for you you him. know that guy, yeah. you know who that been yeah. that guy. Yeah, yeah. Have you? Sure. Many times. Uh, a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there's like a twenty year difference, a couple of times. Wow. Yeah. And and what do you talk about? What the hell difference does that make? I mean, like, what do? Because there are some things with my wife where, like, I can't bring up 
you know, hey, let's joke around about the TV shows we watched when we were growing up. No, I know. You know like, I, mean? I have that with I, I'm with like old... music. You can't talk about like music that you, your your girlfriend would be like. Uh, I like the Backstreet Boys, or whoever. No, I know. Like I, I'm, the w- woman I'm with now is like 37. I think. Yeah, 36, 37. I yeah. should really know the exact date. You should. And I'm 54, so you like, look great. You moisturize. Yeah, I do. Yeah, me too. What uh, do you use? Uh, no, you don't Luberderm. have to plug it. Facial. The, the Luberderm facial, daily okay. facial I use moisturizer. That. I what use do you that. use? I use that on my privates. Really? No. Interesting. I use, uh, <laughs> I love me and you talking about moisturizers. On my privates, I use uh, saliva. You do? Yeah. Where do you get that? Right out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, I use oil of Olay. Why are we on talking about this? Yes, on my face. Not on my privates. It's way too expensive for my privates. Really? I use your saliva on my privates. <laughs> Not when I'm awake. <laughs> this podcast is I tell you. down to well, I, what Obama, I feel, Obama's listening to this, yeah, shaking his what, head. What I, this is better than Obama. What I feel... No, I'm kidding. That was an amazing day, but we didn't talk about this stuff. What I feel bad about right now is saying, what difference does it make when you said, what do you talk about? Here's the truth of the matter. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, that came out of my mouth, and I realized like I that was take it back. sensitive. I got to take it back. Well, I mean, I went. I dated people that were significantly younger than me, but like looking back on it, the woman I'm with now... I'm no emotional giant. No, nor am so, I. Right. Nor am I. And and you know, quite frankly, the woman I'm with now has really got me sort of level. Right on with, the yeah yeah. It took a long time, but like the uh, I, the younger people, the young people I've dated. Thank God, the young people of this country. <laughs> um, you know, I I I never thought about it much until you you start going out places. Yeah. And I used to do a whole bit about that, where the real, the guy who looks like, the person, the one that looks like the idiot is the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not... No one's like, oh, cool. Well, you know what's People up like, with that, oh, right? Oh, and, yeah. and you can, like, you know, think that he's taking advantage of her. But I've found most of the time, that guy's the sucker. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's... Especially not, where we live, yeah. Sure. But, like, I, I liked, I genuinely liked the uh, the women who were, like, significantly younger than me, and I learned things from them, and granted, we couldn't talk about TV shows when we were younger, <laughs> right. and, but they, they do have a sensibility that is, uh, like, you get to a certain age, and you're kind of locked in things, and you realize how limited your perception is, because we're just yeah. hung up on how we grew up. That's right. And they bring a lot more to the table. They're definitely more capable with you know existing in the world than I think I was. Have you ever been doing something with her and thought like, what am I doing? Oh, oh no. Yeah. What am I doing? Not with this one. Why am I rollerblading? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one, the one I'm with now is, we have a lot in, uh, a lot in common in those areas. Yeah. Where we're like, we don't need to go there. You both we? love rollerblading. Well, no, we don't. We both love like sitting around going like, do we need to go to that? I don't think we need to go. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. think we need to rollerblade. Do you want to rollerblade? <laughs> no, I can't because it's going to hurt my Let's buy skateboards. Let's both buy skateboards. No, no skateboarding. No, yeah. none of that kind of stuff. Like, you, yeah. you know. But uh, it's always fancy. It's those fancy modes of transportation that that screw you up. You know, if, uh-huh. you, if you buy like one of the uh, the little mono wheel things, you know, oh, yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, no, we, she not, doesn't. She doesn't get around on that. We're not doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. We're both very practical. But the last one, I used to just feel like. Do you? you it sounds like you you burn through them. No, not okay. been there with this one for a few years. Oh, great, great. Uh, but the uh, no, I'm pretty long termy. Yeah. But there was one there for a while that was significantly younger. I mean, like, you know, embarrassingly younger. Yeah. Like, uh, I, it might have been, I might have been 50. She might have been 23. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I thought we were sort of. <laughs> See you eye. Yeah, yeah. 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 But as soon as I got outdoors with her, I was like, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. There's nothing. I could just yeah. look at me. Yeah. I'm that, I'm that guy. She's that like guy. 10 yards ahead of you. I'm that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, that's the bit. Just yeah. me just scrambling. <laughs> hey, where are we going? Wait up. <laughs> Wait for me. Uh, did you at the time? You yeah. know, like, did you drive like a convertible? No. To, yeah, no, that would be bad. I was never that, and, yeah. and I'm not even sure. What how about it like happened. a motorcycle with like a sidecar? No, no, I'm not that. Too much. No, I too much. I'm not that midlife crisisy. Yeah, I really didn't see any problem with it intellectually or emotionally. Right. Uh, it was really just sort of like you realize, like, I'm look, I'm old. Yeah. I don't feel that with this one. You feel that one, that with yours? With my wife? No, not at all. Um, so there you go. But you're yeah. not, the, you're, it's normal, man. It's normal. What, less than 10 years or 10 years? Uh, Just 11, 10 years? 11 years. 11 years? It's well, normal. That's probably- it's, <laughs> but it's not 20 years. 
It's not 20 years. <laughs> I like that tone. No, it's good. It's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> it's fine. Ugh, it's just so... I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, you know, love is a weird thing. There, the, and the end. Yeah. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> love is a weird thing. <laughs> thank you for we being fig- here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> we figured Music, it out. credits. <laughs> roll the credits. Where did you come from? Um, I came... I was in New York when you... No, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I grew up in D.C. in that area. In oh, like, really? In like uh, Virginia, like out in the suburbs. Like your dad uh, in politics? No, every uh, everybody else's dad was. Every, no, everybody else's dad near me worked at the Pentagon. No, oh, really. And uh, my dad was an airline pilot. Yeah, so he's he, a pilot. Yeah, you yeah. look like a pilot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you look like the idea of a, a lot pilot. of pi- a lot of pilots look like perverts. Is that true? I think so. Do they they, they wear well. They, they marry wear, women eleven years younger than them. Yeah, <laughs> and they wear like the bomber jackets, you yeah, know. Yeah. And they got well, they're all they Air got, Force like, guys, weird, right? Yeah, and they got like weird mustaches. Yeah, and, like, yeah, bad they, haircuts. And, and, and but they're yeah. the only ones that are, that professionally need aviator glasses. That's right. So, they're the only ones <laughs> legally that should have aviator glasses. Aviator sunglasses. Yeah. Everybody else is like ripping them off. That's right. Yeah, so my dad flew out of uh, what is now Reagan National Airport. and uh, what airline? Uh, an airline that is no longer around called Eastern Airlines. I which, remember Eastern you know, Airlines. Eastern, yeah. Sure. So he flew for Eastern for like a million years. They had the shuttle. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Before the Eastern Shuttle, and they had their own building for a while over there at LaGuardia. I that's think. right. Right? That's right. Wow, you know a lot about Eastern Airlines. <laughs> but <laughs> What's your dad's name? You got- <laughs> Jerry? Oh, shit. You know Jerry Hubel? Jerry, yeah, yeah, Jerry Hubel, the pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bomber Jack. Yeah, 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 you know him. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so that's where we grew up, and everybody else worked in, in at, like, at the Pentagon. So and, a lot of kids government. were like, can't tell you what my dad does. Yeah, for real. Yeah, yeah for yeah. real. Because uh, I don't even know. Yeah. I think that the, I don't know how that works. Like, I guess if your dad is, like, in the CIA or something, what, what do they, what do you, what do you tell your kids? I don't know. You just lo- you just say like um, let, I, I let, work at a sporting goods store. Let your mom handle it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mom will tell you. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know what they. I, I, I imagine they come up with some story that they can stick with. You know yeah. that. Uh, yeah. That. You, but it's like, what if the kids sort of like, I want to. Will you take me to work with you? No, yeah. No, take your kid not. to work there. Yeah. Can't, can't yeah, you go with see me, me assassinate, assassinate someone? Yeah. The Southern, <laughs> South American <laughs> dictator. Yeah. Hey, Dad, yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Run, run like hell! <laughs> Just keep running. So you knew those guys, those yeah. kids. Yeah, I knew. I knew some of those. kids. What'd your mom do? She work in the business? No, my mom uh, took care of us mainly. And then when we got older, my mom went to work for PBS, like doing. How uh, many kids were there? Uh, just me and two brothers. I got an older brother and a younger brother. How much older? Um, uh, just two years on on uh, either end. Oh, really? Much. Yeah. How'd he yeah. turn so out? So we were pretty. T- <laughs> We're we're all pretty close. Uh, they're all good. You yeah, know, they're yeah they're they're good they're good dudes. And uh, my little brother is married, and he has uh, like teenage kids. He really, got, he got married way before me. Yeah, he, my little brother got married, um, like right out of college, and now has kids that are like, you know, full on teenagers with you know going through. You know, yeah, I, I'm like I don't know what to tell you, man. I have like a one year old. Yeah, and so in a cool way, I can ask my little brother for. Is he still married to the same lady? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so he's like yeah. a there, he's, solid he's into dude. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. Solid guy. Totally into it. What yeah. happened to the older brother? My older brother is an assassin. No. What? For no. the CIA? Yeah. Yep, for the CIA. That's amazing. Uh, no, my older brother is, uh, is he lives in South Carolina. My whole family lives in South Carolina now. Ah, except and, for you. Uh, except for me, yeah. So I'm like the, I'm like the black sheep. But uh, yeah, my older brother is a photographer, and uh, you know, kind of like doesn't really care that much about like money and doing, you know, kind of like uh, like artiste. Yep, yeah, exactly. Huh? J- exactly like you? Yeah, I'm probably a lot like me. Does he have books like this? Um, let me let me no, know. I just books. mean like, does he have a room like this? Uh, yeah, he, he definitely has a room with books, and he knows what books are. Yeah, uh huh. That's good for sure. It's that different than you, right? Um. <laughs> Do you have a room with Very, books? I don't. I don't. I have a book with uh, magazines. I mean, I have a room with magazines. Yeah, you do. Just tons of magazines. <laughs> Mostly dirty So magazines. now, when you, Dad, like, did you go up in the cockpit and stuff? I did, yeah. And uh, this was all, obviously, uh, before, you know, 9-11. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but back in the day... You know, you, 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 free for all. It, it was a free for all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like when we were little, um, you know, you we we you ride uh, for free. Yeah, you fly for free. Sure. Like, yeah, the I whole had, family, right? Yeah. So I had a little, basically, like a little uh, blank checkbook. Yeah. That you can, you know, you go up and you fill out the from to, you know, yeah. like where am I going? You go up and you hand them the the 
coupon, yeah. coupon, depending on where you live. And they just say, okay, have a seat. We'll let you know if, if there's room. And so that's how we traveled, you know, when I was little. And, yeah. uh, but yeah, for sure, like, my dad would take me on, like, my dad would try to, like, buddy up, you know, hey, let's go on a trip, you know, I'm going to take this kid out on a trip, you know, just me and you. Yeah. And so my dad would, like, take me on, a, like, a ski trip, you know, yeah. we'd go out to wherever. And, uh, and, but my dad, I remember one time, everybody's getting on the plane. Yeah. And, you know, you get, you come down the jetway and you take a right and you go down to the, your seat. Yeah. Well, I came on and my dad, like, gave me a wink and he, like, smuggled me into the cockpit like i took a left yeah and got into the cockpit my dad's like get in the closet i was like what and i'm not mark i'm not joking my dad's like get in the closet be very quiet i was like okay so i'm sitting in like the little coat closet yeah in the cockpit of the eastern airlines plane this is probably why eastern airlines is no longer around by the way <laughs> But uh, so I just they got an extra seat in the cockpit for like, for the guy for the, like two or three. In yeah, there. yeah. There's it's called a jump seat. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's for like uh, other pilots that are you know going to somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, I like the voice you have for just anything that has to do with your dad. <laughs> other pilots, yeah. Are <laughs> super cocky. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's do a loop. <laughs> but uh, but so my dad like smuggled me into the yeah. cockpit and was just like hang out here in the in the closet. Yeah. And I'll bring you. So then we took off. And he's like, okay, it's yeah, our coast is clear. <laughs> so I came out, and then it's just me in the cockpit with my dad and the co-pilot. And back then, yeah. they had a third guy, a yeah. uh, navigator, right, <laughs> who would like decide, okay, let's go straight. Okay, take a left. So go. there's a pilot, a co-pilot, a navigator, yeah. and yeah. a jump seat. And That's you're right. Just standing and there. I'm just, I'm just sitting there. Yeah. And well, I would sit on the jump seat. Yeah. And uh, so I, that happened a few times. Yeah. And um, so. I, but it was like you said, it was a free for all. Like yeah. I remember some of some of my memories of it are like, you know, it's just a bunch of guys up there like talking locker room talk. Sure. Oh you yeah. Know, talking yeah. about talking about flight attendants. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I don't I I don't know <laughs> what all went on out on the road. You know. Yeah. Like I uh, maybe my dad has another family. Yeah. You know, it's possible. Po very possible. <laughs> Is he still around? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't now. know if he listens to the podcast. No. So can, I feel. Just ask him. I feel. <laughs> Are they still together? Uh, uh, not, no, no, they got divorced. Oh. Uh, but, uh, there's, there's but thank question. you for asking. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Nah, laughs> no, they, well, they're friendly. They're friendly. Oh, they're, you nice. know, they're in their eighties. And so they, wow. uh, yeah, they're, they're friendly. Um, but anyway, did that come back around? It did. It did. Well, yes, they, they go, they went through a, uh, a pretty, you know, horrible divorce. Yeah. And then eventually I think you get to an age where you're like, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm old. You. I know yeah. You. I know you. I, I'm not going to kill you, you know, and it's like, uh, so then they just like, now they're like, oh, you put your guns down and it's just like, we're friends. Oh, you know, wow. in a way, you know, yeah, you can't bring up certain things like you can't bring up like the divorce or right. like, you know, the, the rental house that you got in the divorce or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. But, um, you keep it, keep that off the table. Yeah. 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 Keep that off the yeah, table. But if you bring that stuff up, it all comes right back. Oh yeah. Really, yeah. They go right back into I it. I imagine. I can see that. Yeah. That was stressful. If I start talking about divorce, I can, I can listen. You, how many are you divorced one time Two twice times. three times no twice twice the second time though that was the bad one the first that was the time, one that took the first time didn't take the first the first one i left oh the really second one i got left mm. you knew her didn't you know me mm. i did know her yeah. i didn't know her but yeah. I, I knew that you were married because you yeah. we were around in new york and yeah. then here because i think we all got out here at the same time so your parents are friends that's nice yeah it is nice and you're um, friends with your siblings and, and everything's good and <laughs> Flying good. around in planes and around closet. planes. Yeah. Well, what I was going to tell you, the, the, the button on the dumb pilot story was that uh, it was such a free for all in the 80s back then. I remember distinctly sitting up there with them and the uh, like the navigator guy <laughs> who's sitting over at the side, yeah. you know, like looking at the radar or whatever they're looking yeah. at, had like pornography, <laughs> like like taped to his desk, like like the inside of a locker room. And he would just, you know, once you take off, it's just like all these centerfolds came down. Come on. And you see like 70s bushes everywhere. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah, for real. But and this was they, the 80s, but, but there's still like, women with 70s wasn't his bushes. plane. I mean, they... I, maybe... You, that's a good point. That is a great point. That means point. you got to bring that for the flight. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't get through a, a round trip. I'm, <laughs> until this moment, I've never thought about it, but that... What you said is true. He had to bring that <laughs> pornography with him... Tape it under the desk, <laughs> tape it onto the thing. But I'm telling you, I remember All right. naked pictures of like a couple of women, not a crazy amount. 
but like a couple naked pictures of ladies and be like, hey, guys, when you're not flying the plane, look at this. <laughs> look at these boobs. <laughs> That guy. Yeah. I mean, maybe he was like a character, and they were just sort of like, Ugh, when, Ugh, I don't have to fly with him. Yeah. There's pictures Yeah, again. Per, pervy Dave. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Dave. Come on, put him away. Put your put your thing back in your pants. <laughs> Kid's here. Yeah, my son's here. <laughs> Look out the window, boy. Look at that. Look at that cloud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. That's pretty exciting. It, yeah, it was it was it was cool to ha- you know to have a dad that did that. I I used to like walking through airports with my dad. You know, it's sure. like he was in the uh, uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd walk through and you'd be like, yeah, my dad's the bus driver. But he was an Air Force guy. Yeah, he was an Air Force guy and a Marine pilot too. Yeah, in Vietnam. Um, no, somehow he missed Vietnam. I don't know. Maybe he's like, I don't After? know. I'll have to ask him. Um. Before, uh, might have, I can't remember. I don't know. Huh. Yeah, might have just skipped his his yeah. his unit. But that's somehow. how he learned, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's and, and now my little brother's a pilot. My little brother flies for um, UPS. Really? No, no plug. I don't know if you have you know if they're an advertiser. I I had a UPS guy over this uh, today. You did? Was it my brother? I I don't think so. He wasn't in a the plane. Pilots, he was in a brown truck. The, pi- <laughs> the pilots do double duty. <laughs> the <laughs> pilots, yeah, they'll land. Yeah, it was weird. He did. A plane landed on yeah. my street. Yeah, there he is. So he had a, did, was he in the Air Force? No. He, he just learned? He, um, no, he, yeah, I guess he was. He was. He was in the, uh, but in the, like, the, uh, Air Force Reserves. That's what it was, yeah. I was, I've never been in the military. Right. Have you been in the military? No, no. no I, I would remember that. Yeah, I would remember it. Too. Yeah, no, I was in the military. Have you ever, I, have you ever, um, I think I'm, I think I'm done over a USO the, tour? I'm the, over the age now. You for, might, yeah, you might not qualify. No, not anymore. Uh, I have not done a USO tour. Oh, have yeah. you? Yeah, I did. I went to Iraq with, um, in 2007, me and uh, Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle set it up. He's a Marine. I know. Rob, I've talked to Rob. Yeah. Yeah. And solid so, guy. Yeah. Marine guy. American. But friendly guy. Good, yeah. Decent Very color. friendly. Midwestern. Yeah. 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 Uh, great guy. And uh, so he set it up. So we went over there, me and him and Horatio and Paul Shear, uh-huh. and did a bunch of comedy for the troops. How was that? You know, you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome to the troops. Yeah. That's what I'm saying now. It's yeah. It's like 10 years later, and I'm s- still telling them you're welcome. Not not, uh, not thank you? No. Nope. You're welcome for the comedy. Yeah. Uh, no, of course. It was it was amazing. It was incredible. It, did, they have a, did they enjoy it? Uh, did they? I think they did. You know, yeah. it, I, it's, it opens your eyes to uh, when you when you go over there, you do see it's all um, 18-year-old dudes from, like, Alabama, you yeah. know? And uh, and they are. We, we went over there during the Iraq. And you guys situation. are sort of, uh, you know, you're not standard stand-ups per se. No, we, yeah, we went over there and did like a bunch of sketches and like uh, making fun of the Pentagon. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And they actually told us like we could do whatever we wanted, so we had like a bunch of kind of like funny bits. And then we did like uh, we threw a bunch of sketches together. We we did some and then, uh, we did some kind of like dating game where we got like uh, a few guys up. And then, like, Horatio might have come out in, like, a wig. I don't know. It, really? But listen, all I'm telling you is it killed. It did? It killed. Yeah? We killed in Iraq. Is that true? I can say that I killed is in Iraq. Is it true? I shouldn't say that. Is it true? Uh, I feel like the shows went went pretty well, but now, only going- because they're... St- they're they're really hungry for comedy, right? Mark. But I that's mean, why you should go over there. They're, oh no, but I mean, like, are you going to the smaller camps? Yes, we went to. Uh, so it must have just be terrifying, you guys. Like, it was really scary. We took uh, Black Hawk helicopters everywhere we went for real, and they took us to what are called uh, FOBs, yeah. uh, forward operating bases, right. and we uh, we went way 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 uh, in like n- I think like northern Iraq, right. And, uh, it's not like the Bob Hope Arena. No, situation. no, no, no. We were sleeping in, um, we were sleeping in shipping containers. They had like shipping containers and they like punch holes in the, in the, in the thing for windows. And then you, they had a couple cots in there. And I mean, it, it was, it was not comfortable, but they, uh, but they take good care of you. And then they, the main thing is like, you just get to meet all these people that are super psyched yeah. to have anyone come over there and entertain them. You well, know? yeah, definitely. Um, that's great, man. Good for you doing that. Yeah. One time we were, we were, um, we were flying in a helicopter going to like the next place. Yeah. And it was a really long trip and, uh, it was like a two hour flight in a, bl- and so they open up the doors on the side. And so there's just hot <laughs> wind blowing in. You yeah. Know, it looks like the, oak. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sounds. great sound effects. Yeah. Great sound effects. What? Just what I did? Yeah. Dude, you're wasting your time. I know. You gotta get into the sound effects. I keep effect. trying to get my agent to do <laughs> 
there's no reason why we couldn't use that in movies. <laughs> there's no uh, why, why even <laughs> why even put film in the camera? How's that? <laughs> even better. That's a motorboat, right? No, it's jet kinda, ski. <laughs> it's kind of you know the sound. Uh, I don't know. As just a fart? No, it was a generic wind sound. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. 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 But uh, but so we were flying to the next uh, base, and uh, it was like a two hour flight, and everyone was like trying to fall asleep, and you know they got a in in either door they have a guy on in the door with one of those big um, guns on yeah. a on a stand, you know, like yeah. a you know huge I've machine. Seen that gun. in movies? Yeah. yeah. It looks like uh, Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Right. So we're flying along. Everyone's like kind of half asleep, and uh, all of a sudden, you just hear that we, someone on the on the helicopter is just like, like the loudest machine gun. And someone's just spraying down the desert, hailing down a hellfire of of artillery. And I look over. I'm like screaming. Sheer is screaming. Riggle's screaming, and it's. Horatio sitting there laughing his ass off, shooting the machine. Like, the, I guess the guy, the gunner was just like, yeah, come on over, man. <laughs> and like, let Horatio just light up the desert. Cause you know, there's nothing out there. There's just nothing. <laughs> yeah. So Horatio's just like, blah, 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 blah. it was terrifying. It was so scary, but that's like my main memory. <laughs> It's like that guy did uh, what your dad did with yeah. Horatio. Yeah, it was the yeah, same guy. The yeah, yeah, get over here. <laughs> Come here, kid. Get over here and play with his gun. <laughs> yeah. You guys didn't know what was happening until it was happening? Mm-mm. I thought we were taking heat. Oh, man. So I can say I went, uh, you know, in a way I can say I've served. Saw some action. Yeah, I was, I was in the shit. Yeah, you, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so... What did you go? You went to college, and when did you start doing the comedy? Well, yeah, I I I went to New York. Um, I always wanted to be in comedy, but I was uh, I didn't know how to do it. But did we skip something? Did you go to college? I went to came? college. Yep. Where <laughs> did we skip something? Uh, yeah, I went to Clemson in South Carolina. Clemson, go Tigers! Uh, we won the. How many I don't schools know if have fo- said that? I don't know if you're a- go Tigers. I don't know. A lot of them. A couple of them. Yeah. A couple of them. But uh, no big deal. We are the football national champions. Really? Currently. You didn't know that? What do I know about sports? I don't know. You're wearing a football jersey. Hey, shut up. Don't tell people. <laughs> See, I don't know. I, did you if play you had it? answered the door in a football jersey, yeah, you would have been like, I, I what's uh, happening? Yeah. What, do you, are you a big sports guy? Not really, no. I did follow, you play ball? No, I played soccer. You know, I'm a, I'm a white guy. I played, yeah. you know, I played soccer like what when, does I was, that mean? when I was little. Well, been, it's just like a suburban. Right. It seems like a, yeah, a you're contemporary right. suburban. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could have been a quarterback back in the day. You're Thank 48. You. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I could have gone pro. Damn it. But, uh, you know, I, I played soccer in yeah. high school and, you know, I wasn't. Great. They didn't even have soccer in high school when I was in high school. It wasn't even invented then. I don't even think so. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just didn't know the teams we had. Yeah. A lot of people think that I'm a sports guy, um, and I appreciate it. I really do. I, I don't know. Riggle is, right? Riggle is a... Um, Maybe not. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he played. He might have played football and stuff, and uh, he's a big like sports fan, too. Oh, he he's, is. Yeah, he's from Kansas City, and he's, he's, right. he's winning all those sports games. Yeah, because I think I probably... I think, you know, he plays golf, too. I don't play... I don't really... I'm not good at golf. I'm, I'm happy to hear this, because I think I might have... like I had Riggle in here, and I prejudged him. Yeah. Like, you know, he was probably not the kind of guy I would like in high school. Yeah. But he, he got better, I think. Well, you would... So he's, he's a nice guy, genuinely well, well, a good guy. For sure. But you would think that um, you, you don't realize uh, the, the there's a lot of layers to him, and uh, and you don't realize that going into it. You think like... Decent guy, though. Yeah. And I imagine sure. some of those guys I prejudged, even in high school, might have turned out to be decent guys. Not many of them. No? Not a lot I of them. I think it's a small number. Is there a chainsaw? Probably the guy comes Wait. around with the chainsaw sometimes. Are we in danger? No, he just he just runs down the street waving it around. <laughs> yeah, we got to get the hell out of here. We're like, there's the guy again. Mark, we got to every get out day of here. four o'clock chainsaw man. Chainsaw man, we got to get out of here. I would say that's probably a guy with a leaf blower. No, that's a chainsaw. Is it? We're in danger. How, do you want me to? Let's just ride it out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I just want to know if it's going to stop, and we'll have to go around and shut all the fucking windows. 
Do you have like a uh, what? Like a producer's assistant that'll go out there and and give him a hundred bucks to say, <laughs> yeah, like a shoot. Get I, 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 how do those conversations happen? It's just sort know. of like you know you hear dogs. Well, when you're on, you know, I think set. that's a racket. I think that if you're filming a TV show, a lot of people think like, oh. I can make a hundred bucks. I'm sure they can. By the way, if you're listening to this, here's an easy way to make a hundred bucks. And when you see people filming something, crank up your, start honking the horn, start yelling. Doing that yard work with the yeah, loud equipment. Get your leaf blower out. And then some like kid will come over. Yeah, some 18 year old kid will with come a headset over and on. Be like, hey man, I'm so sorry to bother you. Is there any way you could not do that? We're rolling. People are like, oh really? You're rolling? Cause I'm trying to make my yard nice. <laughs> You fuck. I don't have any time during the week other than now <laughs> yeah. to do this. Now's the time to blow my I'm leaves. sorry. You guys are just going to have to wait. How long are you going to be? Oh, at least an hour. Yeah. Hold we, on. Let me talk to my uh, we boss. Were, we were shooting something recently in a park out here in Los Angeles where we all live. And uh, this old man came out and he was and he said that we were on his property. And we said, no, 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 this is a park. Yeah. And he said, no, no, no. This, yeah. All this right here, this yeah. is my property. So, and he wouldn't get out of the shot. He's a like, crazy man. Yeah, he was a crazy man. Yeah. You pronounced it correctly. He's a crazy man. <laughs> crazy man. He's a wolfman. <laughs> and uh, so we had, you know, we offered to pay him, and he said, I don't want your money. <laughs> We're like, really? Like, what is this about? So we finally had to, like, call, like, the, the county like tax assessor and have them like email us the property re- and show him like we're on a park really get out of here it went that far it, it took a long time oh my god i still don't yeah i don't know why i don't know what he wanted if you're listening oh, to this you piece of shit go back in there oh i know i know what this is all leading to i'm gonna have to close the windows okay i'll fill time while you close the windows right. hey everybody it's rob you listen mark's outside so i'm gonna fill time Call me on my cell phone right now. Two one two, five five five. One two. Oh, you used the five 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 number. <laughs> You're a professional. I'm noticing this glow calendar. You guys have calendars for your TV no, show. No, one of the cast members made that. Oh, the really? guy, uh, yeah, Chris Lowell, who took a lot of pictures. Yeah, had those made. He put, he's also on the show that you didn't watch. So I'm gonna uh, watch it. Yeah, I don't do what you want to do. It's your fucking life. I will watch so, it. All right. Um. So you, so you. So I went to college Clemson. at Clemson. Tigers, yeah. go Tigers. That's how we got distracted. Didn't play football. Didn't play football. They, they, are, they are the national champions. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah, you, uh, said that. you can catch them anytime, yeah. every Saturday. What did you study there? Marketing. Only because here's the thing. I wanted to. Uh, you didn't know what you. Wanted. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought. Here's what I thought. That's one of those majors. Marketing. What does that mean? <sighs> Management. What is that? What did? What? what did, I thought. Here's what, what I thought. Did you learn? Um. What are the even the classes? <sighs> Mark, it's like uh, it's business, you know. It's like it's like, uh, hey, how do we promote this product? Really, that kind of stuff, sort of, you know, in a way. It's a, that's a whole major. That's a whole major consumer behavior. You know, yeah. why do people buy the things they buy? That's a whole major. That's a whole major. You go to class, and they're like, "What's going on with what? Why? Why do people act like this in but grocery what, stores?" It's economics part of it. Yes, you take economics, all that economics, finance, oh. uh, marketing. You did all management. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you take it in? I a little bit. Here's the thing. I wanted to at the time. It's this is all going somewhere. Yeah. At the time, I thought I I wanted to. Um, be in comedy, but I didn't know how to do it. So I thought, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll get into advertising. Did you? That ever- makes sense. Like you go like copywriting. Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. I thought I'd move to New York and get into advertising. You'd write uh, jingles and blurbs, blurbs and bloopers. Yep. And and uh, so what are those catchphrases? Catchphrases. Yeah. Uh, how about a hamburger? Hey, let go of the beef. <laughs> Hey, don't eat that. <laughs> hey, eat this. Get that out of your mouth. <laughs> Put this in your mouth. Yeah. You weirdo. I like that one. Yeah. Get that out of your mouth. Put this in your mouth. Get that out of your mouth. Put this in your mouth. Yeah. That's Don't good. steal that, people yeah. listening. <laughs> so uh, I thought I would work in advertising. So yeah. because I didn't have the... Here's the here's the, the lesson that I'm trying to uh, get across. Convey? Yeah. I, I didn't have the courage to say to myself, why don't you just get into comedy and start writing jokes? And did you think, did you know that that was a possibility? I didn't know how you do it. Like, how do you, what do you, how do you do it? Like, you just start, I didn't You had know, no interest in doing stand up. I was, that seemed pretty scary to me. And I'll mm. tell you why. I remember going to like Luna Lounge 
And so this got, is after college when you went to New after, York. This is this is in, in New York, yeah. I want to hear about the, the okay. dark you, times of floundering, floundering. Where you couldn't get a job in New York, and yeah, and, and everything you, was terrible for for real. I uh, I thought <laughs> I went to interview at uh, after at college. A, yep. So right after college, you're like, I'm moving to New York. Moving to New York. Yeah. More or less. I'm, I moved to Aspen, Colorado. What did you do there? Skied for a year. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Tolerant parents, a little money in the bank. Good for you. I don't know what. I think my parents thought, go, go ahead. Yeah. Good luck. Enjoy you, it. How are you at the skiing? Really good. You, you want to see me? Yeah, do it. <clears throat> Look at this video on my phone. <laughs> um, it was a great time. Yeah. Um, did there, you teach t- skiing? No, or you just lived no, no. Up there? I worked in hotels. Oh, I, wor- yeah. I worked in hotels. And at that time, the Aspen Comedy Festival was going on. You remember oh, yeah. that? I was part of it. What year? Yeah. Uh, this was like n- early nineties. I was and there at ninety five. You were? Yeah. I'm. Mm, I missed you. That was. I was. That was not a good year for me. <laughs> but I had. Uh, I bought tickets. Uh, Gary Shanley performed there oh. when I lived out there, and I had front row tickets to Gary Shanley. Yeah. And it was amazing. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah. And uh, and I didn't know, but years later, me and Rob Riggle would go to the Aspen Comedy Festival with a little sketch show that we did, and that's how we got agents. Anyway, no big deal. Came full circle. Came full circle. Kind of. Came. Yep. Totally yeah. did. But you at the time, at the time, didn't Gary know what Shannon, I was doing. I was like, you weren't sitting there going, no, I want to do I, that. I wanted to do comedy. Didn't know how to get into it other than stand up. Stand up seemed too scary. I didn't think what 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 was I going to do. An average looking white dude yeah. from the suburbs of like northern like what's you my do take? look like that. What yeah, like what are people gonna do? Like, oh that guy's got a hot take on stuff, you know? So But you knew it, you wanted to be funny. But I but I knew that I I knew that I could be funny and I felt like I could do it in a you know, but I didn't know until I got to New York. I hadn't seen improv before. So you go to Aspen for a year. You ski. You work I at ski, hotels. Work at hotels. Gary Shanling, see Gary Shanling, and then, and then I, you're like, oh, "Time for real life." Yep, time for real life. So then I moved to New York. Yeah. and try to get into advertising. Doesn't go well. How'd that go? I'd like to didn't, hear some of those stories. Did, did, hey, I'm, I'm hey, Rob. Hey, what's up? I'm Rob, and uh, I want to work here. Oh, cool. Where else have you worked? Uh, nowhere. <laughs> oh, cool. Where are you coming from? Uh, I just lived in Aspen. Oh, cool. How? What do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. I just I like to ski and smoke weed. Oh, okay. Uh, get out of here. <laughs> so that's sort of how that went. Uh, when I was, in, you know, so uh, so I floundered around, and the, at the time, I was living uh, with a couple guys, and one of the guys uh, had a girlfriend. Mm. Uh, I had roommates in New York. It was super poor. Where, like, oh, we're, we're in Queens. No, I uh, I lived with these investment. I, I, everyone I lived with was making money. They were all like these investment banker guys. How'd you get hooked up with those guys? Like a friend of a friend. They oh. said, "Hey, th- this guy's got a floor that you can sleep on." So I moved to New York and uh, I lived in like you know some a place on the Upper West Side, uh-huh. but was sleeping uh, under the stairs. Literally, they had like they didn't have a room for me. I slept under the stairs. Uh, uh, in this in this place, and I had like a little egg crate. You remember those egg crate match? Like the, like in this room? Yeah. Like the, the, the things that are soundproof. These oh, yeah. are my old mattresses. No, come on. You could have done better. Why do we do that to ourselves? Because I th- literally had no money. I moved to New York, and I had no and money. No friends. I, I I didn't know anyone. I thought I'm gonna move to New York. I'm gonna get into advertising. I'm gonna give myself a year. I'm gonna give myself one year. And I didn't know anything about New York. I didn't know anyone in New York. So wild, right? I didn't know where I was it's going. Like this, and like that must have been sad times, dude. I remember going. Uh, I tempt. I had temp oh, it's jobs. Getting sadder. That, well, that's what I was gonna tell you. Yeah. Is that my roommate's girlfriend worked at a temp agency, and she's like, "All right, do you know uh, 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 Microsoft Word? No. Do you know Excel? What? Do you know how to make a spreadsheet? No. I don't know any of that. Can you? Do you have a suit? No." I didn't have those things. So she would go, okay, here, go to this place tomorrow yeah. morning at nine o'clock. Don't be late. You're going to answer the phones. Yeah. And, you know, and so I would just go to these places and she would lie for me. She would just say, yep, this guy who's coming in, he's a real sharp customer and he knows, he knows Microsoft Word and in and, and Excel and he can type, type. And I was like, no, I can't. I remember I had a temp job at the Time Warner or Time Life. Yeah. And my job was inputting zip codes of people that subscribed to Time Magazine. Oh, wow. So they're like, here you go. And then one time I had a job at Goldman Sachs yeah. for a couple of days. 
and you uh, my Steve Bannon there. Uh, g- great dude. Yeah, really. Was great. he fun then? Yeah, really yeah. good guy. How and about that? That uh, Gary Cohen was he there? He was probably there. Yeah, he's probably up and coming, up yeah. and coming guy. But my job, you know, again, like I, I would temp for these people that their their receptionist was sick, so they would send me in, and I would be like, "Hey, what do you need, Steve?" And uh, they'd be like, "I don't know, staple this stuff." And so they'd give me stuff to staple. Yeah, and I remember. Uh, I distinctly remember barging into a, a very important meeting in a conference room in lower Manhattan in like Goldman Sachs. And I had stapled all of these reports together. And I just said, uh, Hey Steve, I'm done. I'm done putting all the reports together. All these guys in suits whip around and look at me like, why, is he why are you in here? <laughs> we're a bank. We're trying to solve, you know, we're trying to take money from people. We are running the world. Yeah, we're, we're controlling the money. We're controlding all the money everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and you just, you're happy with yourself. Get out of here. So that's what I did. You're for, proud of yourself yeah. that you stapled some things. Yeah. So I did that for for like I attempt for like a couple of years yeah. in New York, uh-huh. and then um, and then I and got then you're on the bridge, and then I'm on the bridge, <laughs> and, and some, I'm some back. guy comes up to you and says, uh, and starts an improv. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I started taking improv classes in New York. And, um, and, and what drove you? To um, do that? I saw my roommate at the time. Yeah. I had switched roommates now. Yeah. And my roommate knew. Did you have a room now? Um, at this point, I had a room. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And um, I was living with um, a guy who um, was a funny guy, also trying to get his shit together, a guy named Mike Henry, who went on later to work for Family Guy. And uh, he created the Cle- yeah. the Cleveland show. Oh yeah, really funny writer. But at the time, we we're just broke dudes living in New York, and he was just a friend of a friend. And he said, "Hey, uh, you should go see this improv show with me. I'm going to go see this improv show." And it was uh, that show, uh, Ass Cat, that Amy Poehler at the old UCB. Yeah, not even they didn't they hadn't even started the theater yet. Oh. So it was like a, uh, they, they would do them in these little pop up places, right? And uh, so I went to see uh, an Ass Cat. And it was like Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and Adam McKay and like uh, John Glazer and uh, Stephen Colbert and like all these, you know, big Chicago comedy future superstars who had just moved. They had all just moved to New York and were getting it going. You know, I think some of them were I think like I'm sure McKay was writing for SNL or something. like uh-huh. that. And uh, anyway, I saw that show and changed my life. I was like, oh, that's what that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you do it. If you don't want to do stand up, that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. And and they hadn't even gotten the theater together yet, but when they uh a few couple weeks later, I think they started this theater and started doing classes and I was like, "Yep. The yeah, one the yeah. original one, the one with the weird seats, the yep. old the old strip bar." That's right. Yeah. There's was an old strip bar on on the tan- and, they, and the, they got the seats from the bus terminal or something. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh it was an old strip bar and uh they used to get a lot of weirdos coming in there and looking Still, for yeah. strip shows. <laughs> And we'd be doing, you know, improv and sketch shows, and people want to jerk off. Yeah. And you'd be like, no, no, no. They, got, they had to turn away a lot of Orthodox Jews. Mm. The Hasidim used to come. It's true. You've heard that story. Yeah. It is true. Yeah. There was, for some reason, a lot of uh, Hasidic Jews would come into the theater <laughs> uh, looking for strip shows, and we'd be like, oh. And some no. of them would stay for the comedy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've heard that story. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've heard a you, couple of versions of it. Yeah, it's true. It's mm. true. And we, but we used to have to like go out on the street and uh, hand out flyers on that street. No, we go down to Union Square right. and other other cool places. You know, the East Village, and we try to hit up college students to come to our improv and sketch shows. Right, I remember. And, what, uh, what street was it on though? Like twenty second, twenty second Street. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. So, and that's how we would get people to come see our shows. And that was the one like Matt. Lived at top of it. Yeah, Walsh. Yeah, lived, Walsh lived, lived above the theater. Yep. Yeah. And um, so we would just try to pack the house. And, and at that time, it, it's not like it is now where there's like a million people trying to do shows there. It was like, we need shows, yeah. you guys. You know, Walsh and Besser and, and Amy and, and Ian, they'd be like, you guys uh, write a show. Put up a show tomorrow, you know. Yeah. So we would just throw up shows. And Really? Uh, it was like that? Yeah. It was really like. Um, you had they, were to, shit. They, they needed time filled. They needed time filled. Yeah, I mean, literally, if you had an idea for a sketch show, you could do it. But were you taking classes or just yeah. hanging out? Yep, taking so, classes. So it was the original four teaching. Yep, and that was it. That was it. That was <laughs> it. And then, uh, and then, like you know, a year later or a couple of years later, you would start. Like I started teaching there, so I started teaching improv. Who'd you, you know? take with? Uh, I tried to only take with Ian. 
I took a, I took a class with Besser and with yeah. Amy. They were great. But when I got in with Ian, that was my dude. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Ian went on to like write on, uh, uh, I think, he, I think he was a showrunner maybe on Key and Peel, but like there's something about him that he's a machine. He always scared me. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's one of those guys that's he like intimidated me. Yeah. He, he's like, he's kind of a, yeah. He's out a, of all of them. Yeah. Couldn't get a handle on that guy. You can't, you can't get a read on him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but comedy wise was a machine and knew, um, how to make any improv scene funny. And like you would do, you know, when you would take classes with him, you would do a terrible, terrible fucking improv scene, just a disaster. And he'd be like, okay, here's what you said. And then here's where it went. And this is where it took a bad turn. And he was so, uh, like analytical about it and scientific about it. He could show you this is where it went off the rails. If you had just gone in this direction, right? That would have made sense. And then you guys would have had a funny scene, right? And that was, but you can't helpful. control that shit in the moment. You, no, 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 no. You just have to fail, dude. Like we, we, I'm telling you, man, I feel bad for all of the people that came to early shows that we did so many. Horrible, That's all right. That's all horrible I mean. shows. Yeah, but but you know you you do learn very quickly. Oh, that that was bad. But that still happens for sure. There's got to be plenty of shitty shows. How yeah, many? for sure. But but less so as you you know you figure it out. Sure. Like like eventually you figure out like oh well, like, these are the people I want to perform with. These are the guys that I think are right. Funny. Well, I guess now you know you do enough of the sort of. Uh, class-driven shows like the, the, this. The, like, there's not a desperation for shows anymore. I imagine you guys are probably out in front of audiences, regular audiences, before you were probably ready. For sure, for sure. <laughs> and people be like, need... "Oh boy!" People <laughs> yeah. leave there and be like, Ew, "What yeah. was that?" You know? Yeah. I mean, that's why so many people think that improv is bad because, like, probably because of me. Yeah. You know, it's just, that's all I hear. And the guys that I came people up with. People are like, I don't like improv. I don't like, because Steve of Rob Hubel. Hubel. Rob Hubel. Thank you for calling me Steve. Wow. Do you have a brother named Steve? <laughs> no. Where did Steve come from? I don't know. Why did I call you Steve? I love it. Rob. Steve. <laughs> I'm going by Steve. Steve Please Hubel. Please tweet at me, <laughs> at Steve Hubel. Please. I know who you are. Uh, so, so that's how. And uh, you started teaching? So I started teaching improv classes and then. Right about that time, um, I, um, I started doing commercials. I, someone, some, a commercial agent, uh, started scouting that, you know, the theater started to get a little bit of heat on yeah, it, you yeah. know. Who's there now at that point? Uh, at that point, it was like Cordry, uh, Ed Helms, uh, Andy Daly, Riggle, Shear. And they all came up through the ranks? They all came up. Yeah, we all started around the same time. It's amazing. But what, what changed, uh, things for me was, uh, I got a commercial agent and then I started getting commercials and then that just gives you some, some, uh, ability to tread Money. water. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so like I, national commercials. Yeah. So I got really lucky in that world. Um, and that kind of bought me some time. Did you get on a roll with them? I did. Yeah. Like yeah. you were that guy on the commercial for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I Here's a, that guy again. That was your, that was, your that, was my, that was my thing. Yeah. yeah. I had a commercial in New York that they used to play before the movies and uh it was called inconsiderate cell phone man and it was just me being a jackass on my cell phone talking really loud oh, this you know? is to tell everyone to be quiet telling everybody yep to turn your phone there's a movie commercial that's right it's yeah. a movie commercial so that was like my first like one of my first pain oh, so you're walking around new york and people are like dude dude hey <laughs> inconsiderate no everybody said like uh 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 insensitive cell phone no yeah. one could ever get it right right, right. so uh so but yeah so that was my thing for mm. like a few people everybody called me that it so was great so you're improving you're making money doing yeah. commercials that you, you're not comfortable with but you can't fight it no you can't fight it i uh and I, of course everyone in that world is sort of like no it's good dude it's great yeah yeah, yeah. i did a uh i did a a really embarrassing like utterly humiliating Olive Garden commercial that um, it was really because I used to try to only do the funny ones you know yeah. I would just go out for the funny commercials right and um, and like you said I got on kind of a roll and but then I did this one for Olive Garden it was like strangely sincere and um, they were like they, they 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 tricked me they let me they I came in and they're like hey uh, we you know you're funny and you yeah. can just improvise do whatever you want right do whatever you want. So they let me do that like all day long. And then like they wore me out and I got really tired. And then the, at the end of the day, they go, Hey, let's just, 
just for fun. <laughs> just for me. Do a serious one. Do a serious one. Yeah. And I was like, uh, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, just totally like dramatic. And, uh, and say, the waitress will come over <laughs> and give you like your, your soup salad and breadsticks. Yeah. And she'll say, Hey, what are you, what are you guys here for? Are you guys celebrating? And then you look at her and you go, no, nope, it's just Monday. But say it real sincere like that. And I was like, okay. So I did that. And then the commercial came out. Yeah. And, uh, it's really, it was really just that. Just really just straight. Just like Monday. looking right into the camera. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was, and uh, the, and the, the the idea was like Olive Garden's always good. It's always good. You don't have to celebrate. Yeah, you can come here on just. Fucking... Not, that's when most people go to Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah, it's usually for birthday parties <laughs> and weddings. But it's just a casual place to eat on, or Monday. just Mondays. Wow. So, um, I was I was upset about that. Did people like judge you for it? Um, people be a like, lot of people started making fun of me. Um, oh, that, with the just Mondays wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you celebrating? Like, yeah, and people say, hey. What is it? Uh, what day is it? And I'd say just Monday. Yeah, it was a bummer. Yeah, but it's hard to you know it's hard to. You learned your lesson. I learned my lesson. Don't ever, don't ever not be funny. Not be funny when they tell you to hey, you want to try one just for me? <laughs> yeah, just that's to... when they're lying. To yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one they're gonna use. That's the one they're gonna use. So when did you start making movies and television? Well, um, oh, but, oh, wait, you and Aziz and me and Aziz and, and, Paul. and Paul did, uh, this MTV show. We got our own TV show on, uh, MTV. This was back when, is MTV still on? I think it's still on. I don't know. You know, <laughs> does your girlfriend know? No. Does your I, wife know? Oh, oh how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? I think it is on still. Uh, but what you did, is. but I'm looking at your credits, but you, oh, the, you were, you did some shit. With the Upright Citizens Brigade when they had the show on Comedy Central. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But total, just like background, like, you know. And what did you do for The Awful Truth? Oh, I was a producer. Yeah. With so, Michael Moore. With Michael Moore. How did that happen? Well, um, it was all interconnected. A friend of mine from UCB uh, was working on uh, w for Michael Moore. And he said, hey, um, do you want to pitch Michael Moore some uh, some comedy ideas? Field pieces? Like? Some field pieces, uh -huh. yeah. And so I said, yes, uh, you know, for sure. And I was a big fan of Michael Moore's movies. And so I just sat down and I wrote all these, you know, ideas for field pieces, sent them to Michael Moore and just somehow got lucky. And he was like, yep, these are funny. Let's meet this guy. So uh, that was when I was doing commercials and everything. Yeah. And um, all simultaneously. Yep. All the simultaneous Daily Show, too. Yep. So th so then the Daily Show came right after that. I got you only to, did a few of those. Only did a few. Yeah. For like six months. It was during the first Bush election is when I was at the Why, did, why didn't it stick? Why weren't you? Well, because I, I, I wasn't very good. Oh. I wasn't a very good field producer oh, really? at the Daily. It was hard for me because back then, you remember how the Daily Show used to be? Like way back, you would go out. Was it John Stewart? Yeah. Oh. But way back, before they figured out, you know what they before they really hit their stride. I think politically, yeah. they would do those funny field pieces where you would kind of go out with the correspondent and you kind of like. A little bit make fun of the person. You, you right. try to find a weirdo that was out there, you know, making right. drilling for oil in his backyard. Right. And you go out there and you kind of make fun of him a little yeah. bit. Well, that's kind of when I was there. And then, uh, and then after that, Bush got elected and they were like, we're not doing this anymore. And John, I think John was like, we're not going to start, <laughs> we're not going to make fun of people. Like now let's, let's get political, you know? So that's. With Bush too. Yeah. With, with once he got, uh, W. Yeah. 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 So, so, once that happened, then they the show kind of shifted and they sort of became you know super political and they didn't really do those kind of field pieces anymore. And uh, but also I just wasn't very good at at, at at field producing. And it said that you like here I'm looking like McEnroe. You did that? Oh man, yeah. I think I appeared on that show Is on that the possible? John McEnroe show. Yeah. Yes, it's very possible. Uh, I feel like I did. Yeah, we had a friend that said, "Hey, why don't you guys come out here to the John McEnroe comedy show?" Uh, you know, John McEnroe is a nice guy. Yeah. Question mark. And, uh, and he, they gave him a, a comedy show. Yeah. Like a syndicated talk like a show. A syndicated talk show. I remember who else was on that. Cause I remember doing it and being like, Oh, you work here. Yeah. Me, well, me and Sheer were there writing jokes for John McEnroe, which is tough. That's a tough job to, yeah. to try to write jokes for, uh, a tennis pro, you know, and he I would, remember the whole thing felt stilted. And oh, awkward. yeah, 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 yeah. And we would, you know, the guests would come on 
and they would they'd be like and we'd be like hey here's a funny idea for you and John and they would try to we would try to write like a sketch for the guest and right. like John and it would never go well right but that was like a very short lived show and right uh, but you know again back then I was just like yeah if I'm if I can make a check get a paycheck. But you're also doing funny movies, little things. Well, then I just started to pop up. Like through UCB, I started to get little breaks. Like McKay started directing movies, you know? Right. And so I knew him at UCB. I knew him from the comedy world at UCB. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so I started to get like little, little cameos and like the other guys, right. Will Ferrell and stuff like that. And so I started kind of popping up doing that. And then, um, around that same time, me and Paul and Aziz did uh, human giant and that kind of opened up a lot of doors for us in the comedy world. We started getting like more opportunities like on sitcoms and stuff like that. So it kind of blew up and it helped Aziz to stand up. Yeah. Yeah. And he had long, weird mullet hair. Yeah. Yeah, and then Paul, he didn't have any hair. He didn't have any hair at that point. And you at that had point. Just, and well, you had it, your white guy hair. I had my white guy hair. Is it all about the hair? But you that really show love, you love guys' haircuts. I do. I take it in. <laughs> but that uh But that show helped us out a lot. That show helped uh us kind of all get going. And you built that at UCB? We um we would test, yeah, we would go out with our we had we used the same director, the guy that created the show this, Jason Wallner who's super funny, smart writer and director. And uh, he did other shows like Eagle Heart. I know and that guy. Like, yeah, yeah, you know Jason. So, I interviewed so, him. Yeah. So we would go out and uh, we would shoot uh, sketches and then we would take them to UCB. We would show them in front of a live audience. And if it got a laugh, then we would put it in the TV show. So that was a great, uh, easy way to t- sort of t- Best test. way to do it. Yeah, just show. David s- Sedaris does that. Oh, really? With his writing. Oh, you just do a live reading. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll, and he'll like, you know, tweak things. Yeah. So, okay. So it all takes off. So that, so yeah. So that's how, that's how it went career wise with, uh, uh, with with human Human giant. Giant. Yep. And that got me going. That got me going. And then the the other big thing is, uh, children's hospital children's hospital that was and that, that was just friends that was cordry was a friend but you did a lot th- that's a lot of episodes dude yeah yeah it was great uh, but you know but mark those are 15 minute episodes there's that's not in syndication I that's no those. money I, I haven't had like a money gig like you I, a, I haven't what, had like the one of these sweet cushy podcast the league? Deals. what about the league i was in like 10 episodes of the that's league. not bad but where was my money gig this the podcast well, it seems like you've had some pretty good gigs. Well, yeah, Transparent has been great. I do. Uh, oh, you're trans- good in that. Transparent now. That's you don't good. watch it. I did. I watched the first it. season. You did? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I thought, I thought it was good because, you know, you were aggravated the first season. Yeah, and you get to be, it's fun to do, for me, more serious stuff. Because, you know, I've done a lot of, like, jackasses and obnoxious yeah. guys and yeah. just kind of idiots, yeah. which I love and I'm, I feel, you know, it's in my wheelhouse. Yeah. But it's fun to do a show where, like, oh, this writing is really good. Oh, yeah, and, and you can uh, just, like, and just be in it. Just say these words. Trust it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you just, like, you know, oh, is this the script? Hey, good job, man. Yeah, that's how this I felt really about good. Glow. Yeah. yeah. Where you don't feel like, oh, I, uh, someone's going to say this. that. Yeah, I'm not gonna like, say, that's not the way I would I do it. better make this funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what's great about Transparent is, like, it's the writing is really great. And the directing, like, they just make it look yeah, amazing. It is. You know? it's, it's, a, it's a ballsy show. Thank you for saying that. But, uh, yeah. And so, also, you were good in The Descendants. That was oh, another, thanks, That was man. a good part. Yeah. Playing, yeah and you got to yeah. play good, with... Pretty good, pretty good people in that movie. Clooney. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty good. <laughs> was that intimidating? Uh, yeah. And Alexander Payne directed that movie. So, yeah. yeah he's good. But you don't want to be the weak link in that movie. You know? Like, I, I got to go out to Hawaii where yeah. they shot it. And right. they show up, and it's uh, Clooney. And yeah. it's uh And it's... Uh, um, uh, Alexander Payne, who's like the best director in the world, and then like me, right? And so I was like, "Oh boy, yeah, I hope I don't drop the ball." So well, I uh, thought you did good. Thanks, buddy. We're not done talking about Clooney. So you He's, mean Clooney? Nice I guy. meet Clooney. Nice guy, and I thought that um, very personable guy. Seems like, like it. Like you know, when, and you know when you're shooting those things and you're uh, in between. Um, scenes. You're yeah. just hanging out. You're yeah. sitting around in someone's house yeah. where you're shooting, and you're just sitting on a couch next to George Clooney. And and I remember at one point we were both on our phones and we're looking at our phones, and I thought like, I'm just gonna ask him for his phone number. Like I'm just gonna say, Hey George. Hey yeah. George. What you know? What I should? We should have drinks. But I lost my nerve. I didn't do it. I had it. I, I was. Had you talked to him previous or? 
Have no. you been talking? No. So I, this would have been kind of the first. It time would have been you'd... the first. You know, f- meet the, meet a guy. You hang out for a few days, and he seemed. But he's really cool. Yeah. He's super funny. Yeah. He's super. He's always doing pranks. You know, everybody says that, and he is. You know, he's always playing pranks. But you on personally movies. hadn't talked to him that much. No, but uh, but I woke up one day and I went into my trailer, and uh, there's a bucket of. Uh, his urine and it, it was above my door and it Stop poured. It. No, <laughs> wouldn't that be great if he was like pranking me for yeah, no but, reason? But really, really like, gross, like aggressive, crass prank, aggre- yeah, like yeah. just a, a, shit in your a trailer. bucket of shit. Yeah, yeah. But, hey man, I put a bucket of shit under your under your couch. I know that feeling though, because I'll talk to people in here and I don't know how people see me or where. What Everybody position. says you're a prankster. Well, no, set. like what position I hold in in the world? Because like, sometimes yeah. I'm like, you want me to just email you that stuff, or you, should I call or have someone you're, call your assistant? Like, so I, you're kind of fishing around, like, right. how, do it, I get it, your number? But I always yeah. go like, who should I get in contact with? Yeah, and like, well, you can just call me. I'm like, oh shit, oh yeah. wow, oh, hey. I'm gonna get John Ham's yeah. phone number. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, do you ever and do then that? I just bother do, you, do you go? And I just like text and text. Hey, hey bro, till they but you what's up, Ham? How's it going? You up? I never, I very rarely will text any celebrity that I've ever, unless I would like to go through, that would be a great episode of the podcast where what? we just go through your phone and yeah. we just, we don't give out the numbers, but we see who they are. Do you want me to get it? Who you got? If you have your phone handy, I, feel, I wouldn't I mind. I feel like it's in the other I room. wouldn't mind a sampling. That'd be fun. Hold on. We, okay. I'll fill time. <laughs> hey guys, Mark's going in the other room. And so what I wanted to do was tell you that, um. You can call me on my phone anytime. I'll pick up. I swear to God, I'll pick up. 212-555-1212. Call me right now. We can chat. We can talk. Oh, here he comes. Be cool. Wait, why don't we do this? Be cool, be cool, be cool. Here he is. Have you been drinking all day? No. Oh. But I did have a... I came from another podcast where they said, do you want a beer? And I said, yeah. Oh, because I just smelled it. And I was like, what's he up to? Wait, you smell right? beer on me? Just now. No. Is that is that for real? Yeah, I smell a little beer. Oh, gross. Um, let's do yours, too. What do you got? Okay. Are we going to go through our phones? Why? I mean, I guess so. Isn't that the game? Are we coming up with a uh, new segment let's on go, the show? Well, let's go. Oh, we don't have segments, but let's see Let's see who. Okay. okay. I'll say one, then you say one. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let me catch up. I'm, I, I'm in A's. Okay. Uh, I, got a, I, got a, <laughs> I got a Ryan Adams. Uh, wow. I got... Uh, you're going... <sighs> You're going. You're going big. Uh-huh. Um, Nothing in A's for you. Um, I got a Pam Adlon and a Steve I got, Agee. I got Curtis Armstrong. Who's that? Man, Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> okay, I do. I got his number. I think I won that one. No, who did you have? Ryan Adams. I had a Pam Adlon, Ryan Adams, and Steve Agee. That's a try. I have Steve Agee. Oh, you have Steve Agee. I have Steve Agee. Do you have Steve Albini? Uh, you don't. Nope. I have Arsh Barker. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I have a. Let's I've, keep going. Dave Alvin. No, yeah. I, I'm done. Oh, I got Aziz. I, have a, I got Scott Ackerman. Oh, I have yeah. Aubrey Plaza. Oh, that's pretty good. I got oh, some good you, ones. Oh, you. So you're. Oh, wait a minute. I got a Carlos Alzraki, and I've got a Jonathan Ames. I think I might. Jonathan Ames is my neighbor. Oh yeah, you live up there. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's, what else? He's a great guy. I got. Uh, I don't know, but see, some Leo these, Allen. I got Leo. That's pretty good. I got Akiva. But you know, Leo Allen actually lives in my old apartment. In Astoria. Is that true? Yes, it is. No, he yeah. lives out here. Oh, he moved? Yeah, he lives out here. I have a Z's too. Do you, are you worried that people are going to listen to this and think we're dicks? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you have a Judd Apatow? I have Judd Apatow. No. I have Fiona Apple. Whoa. Fred Armisen. Oh, shit. Will Arnett. Oh, I got Arnett. Wait, hold I on. I got Arnett. Tom Arnold. Wow. Uh-huh. Wow. That's who I am. Is it true that Tom Arnold has uh, the tapes of Donald Trump saying racist things? He says he does. Why no, it, why no, no he doesn't. With I, it? I have Dave Attell. That's a good one. I have the guy from- I have Ackerman. I have a guy named Brent from Mastodon. Do you know the band Mastodon? I have yeah. his phone number. Hank Azaria. Cool you got Hank Azaria? Ooh, you got a good one. I got a Bob Balaban. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. You're doing- you, But you, I think you, you- Maria Bamford. I feel like you aggressively solicit these. Lance Bangs. Lance Bangs. Elizabeth Lance- Bangs. Sorry, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Banks. That's yeah, but a great I think one. that's not a real you got some one. Some A-listers. I think that I think that's like a contact. I got Tony Collette. That's like an assistant. I, look, I got Tony Collette. Oh, that's good. That's good. Rob Corddry. Uh huh. Terry Crews. Ooh. Whitney Cummings. I got that. Um, these are great. I got a. How about a? I got Alexandra Daddario from Baywatch. Do you know her? That's pretty good. Roseanne Barr. That's a good one. Yeah. 
That's a good one. I got dad. I got I'm a gonna, Todd Berry. You got dad? dad? I got you, I got your dad's phone number. <laughs> got, that's good. I got Andy Daly. Oh, that's good. I'm jumping ahead to, funny. to the D's. Wow. How'd you get? I got Ed I got, Begley. I got, Rob Ed Begley. I got Rob Delaney. That's pretty good. I got a Delaney. Ooh, dude, Patrick Dempsey. Oh. I got Patrick Dempsey's number. I like that number. guy. Yeah. I have two Lake Bells. Yeah, me too. Well, I have one Lake Bell. <laughs> I don't know. Um, got I a have, Richard Belzer. Wow. Yeah. Hey, wait. Hold on. I got on. Rachel Dratch. Wait. Hey. Well, wait. Annette Benning. Wow. Uh-huh. I don't know if we should, how much longer we should do this. <laughs> Are we starting to sound like dicks? I think well, we sounded like dicks when we said, hey, yeah, what famous people do you have in your phone? Someone's people are at work listening to this podcast going, fuck these guys. Oh, yeah. The weird thing is, a lot of these are, I'm just looking at names and I might, like, uh, Teddy Bergeron. Let's do, like, some of the ones that maybe people I got don't Greg know. Fitzsimmons. Oh, I have dead people in here. Oh, who? Shelly Berman. Oh, don't call that number. There's a lot I gotta get rid of here. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't ever do that. You, I mean, either. Like, and it's crazy. I've passed, like, two dead people. Yep. And, yeah. John Krasinski, I got. Mike Chickless. I don't have Krasinski. Um, I'll give it to you. Thanks. Man. Lizzie Kaplan. Dane Cook. Tom Lennon. Ta- Dane Cook. Yeah. You know, the next step of this is let's call these people. <laughs> one quick. Oh, you know what? I'm going to skip ahead. I have Will I Am's phone number. Oh, that's a that's a good and one. And I'm going I'll way skip down. ahead. I'll... I have Alexander Payne's phone number. Let's call him. Well, you were in the movie. Okay. I win. Jean-Claude Van Damme. You do? End of game. You do. Yep, I did. That is the, that's the end of this game. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, nope, David Wayne. I beat myself. Hold on. I'll beat the, both of them. Bob Saget. Wow. Yeah, Saget. I don't know him. Nice guy? Yeah. Great guy. Kristen, I have Kristen Wiig's number. We could call her right now. I have, how, how about Tom Sharpling? Do you have Kristen Wiig's phone number? Yeah. Are you guys pals? Do you want it? No, maybe after. Um, we're, you know, I love her. I can't say that we're pals. I think we're neighbors. I mean, we're pals, but, you know, I don't Why see Why do you have her phone often. number? I did a table oh, read. I did a table read for I have her phone number too, so never mind. Man, this is not a competition. It isn't. I thought that's Can, why. Do we you did mind it. if I take this idea and I start my own podcast? Do, <laughs> called sure. called contact list. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Um, the thing is, I don't call or reach out to any of those people because I'm terrified. I'm me too. I'm too intimidated. Why would you, like, why would you do? Why it? would I call them? I'm not going to call Alexander Payne. All right. So wait. What's this new show? Let's get out of here. Um, the new show I did is called Do You Want to See a Dead Body? Yeah. And it's on YouTube Red. And um, What's did, the premise? Well, did you ever see the movie Stand By Me? Yeah. Okay, so it's a bunch of kids. Uh, they go out in the woods yeah. and they, they know about a dead body. The whole movie's getting to the dead body. That's right. Yeah. Jerry O'Connell, shout out. And uh, so I did a TV show based on that, but a comedy version of that, where I take different uh, uh, famous people out to find a dead body, a different dead body every week. And uh, and that's the setup of the show. It's scripted. It's not like a reality show or anything like that. You're not fooling so, them into thinking you know where a real dead body is? No, although Jeffrey Tambor wanted to do the show, and uh, we couldn't work it out for... Uh, he wanted too much money. No, that's not true. He uh, Just schedule-wise. But he asked me... He did ask me. I thought it was adorable. He said, um, can I ask how these people died? And I said, oh, Jeffrey, it's not actually a dead, but like, we, you know, it's either actors <laughs> pretending to be dead or, you know, we get like one of those CSI, like, you know, uh, decomposing, you know, fat guy, you know, that washed up on the beach, something yeah. like that. And he said, ah, oh, now I get it. So, uh, <laughs> he wanted to prepare, he wanted to prepare, you know, like, well, yeah. how am I going to behave yeah. when I see this person? So it's not really about, um, you know, there, there's no vi- We don't ever know how the person got killed. No one ever asked me how I know where all these bodies are. Yeah. It's just an absurd premise for, uh, for hanging out with yeah. somebody, yeah. you know? So it's me and like, uh, you know, we shot a bunch of these episodes. They're all like 15, 20 minutes, but, uh, it's like Adam Scott, uh, all the people I just read to you in my phone. Sure. The funny crew. The funny crew. Rob Corddry or Randall Park, uh, John Cho, Terry Cruz. Uh, Lil Rel, uh, 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 Judy Greer, Michaela oh, yeah. Watkins. Oh, I uh, love her. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's all, all of our funny friends, yeah. uh, going out on a, on a really dumb, uh, quest to find a different dead body with me. How'd it come out? Uh, it's my favorite thing, like, I've ever done. Oh, it, good. It's really so dumb and so funny because it's, it's for YouTube Red, which yeah. is like their pay yeah. version. I think you pay like, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And they literally for were for the year, uh, I think forever. Huh. And uh, and they, but they were just you know it's a new it's one of those yeah, new platforms. Sure. So they're like, yeah, 
uh, we want people like we're, we're, they're trying to get people that are not YouTube stars to do shows there. So right. you know they're like you do, mean people that people have heard of. Yeah. So they're like do whatever you want, say whatever you want. So you know it's the craziest show I've ever done. And, uh, and it's just super funny. Like it has nothing to do with anything. There's no, uh, I, d- there's no commentary on the real world or politics or anything. It's literally just me one on one with someone else. And we're both acting like idiots. Oh, it's great. And it's uh super fun. Yeah. That's uh, just pure funny. Yeah. Thank you. Well, th- I didn't see it. Thank you. <laughs> You think my name is Steve? <laughs> it's been great talking to you, Steve. I enjoyed it. Um, so, don't steal my giant marble. I'm not going to. I am going to steal this knife. No, no, you can't take. In this hammer. No, the yeah, there's a hammer. lot of there's an unusual the amount of weapons in here for half a guy that for I will say for a guy that interviewed the president of the United States. They took them all out. They took out the hammer. Yeah, and the knife. And the knife. Sure. Did you Did you play the guitar? I don't remember. No. You didn't say, hey, hey, man. Let's hang out. Hey, man, you want to hear me riff? Bit. Yeah. Let's sing. I don't do that. Only with guitar players sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the most famous person you ever played with? Uh, I play, I, you can say here, anybody. Look in your phone. I played with Jimmy Vaughn recently. That was exciting for me. Wow. Um, the most famous person I ever but played. But are you going to go pro? No. Gu- guitar wise? I don't think I can. No. Too yeah. late? I, I mean, I'd like to play with people, and I played with somebody recently, but I found it a little intimidating. I kind of pushed out. Yeah. Ever you ever play on stage with people? Yeah, I have. like in sort of like a live aid. Yeah, I played situation. with Grantley Phillips, you wow. know, and uh, Mark Rivers, and what like Farm Aid? Uh, not a Farm Aid. No, it was a Greg Barrett's, uh used to do a yeah yeah Bring the Rock thing. Yeah, where, yeah, where you tell a story and then play. Yep. Yeah, I'll put together a great band. I played with Brendan Small. Wow, and that crew. Oh wow, those guys are yeah, but it's good to play with good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, he used to do a, a similar type of show. Yeah. Does okay. your girlfriend? Uh, does she enjoy it when you play, or is she annoyed when you play? She's fine with it. I, you know, she doesn't like when I do it while we're watching television. Right. Even if it's electric with not plugged in. But you don't like whip out your guitar and play for her, and she's like, "Oh no!" She's like, she gets like emotional. No, no, no. Yeah, That's not, no. I, I, so I, at the beginning, you do that. Yeah, and then you put it. And away. then once you like, once it's like, once you're like, I'm pretty good at this, right? <laughs> she's like, "Yeah, you're pretty good." Yeah, right, stop that, playing. That's done. Please stop playing. <laughs> Smoke on you're the water. Great. You're Please great. stop playing smoke you're great. on the water. Please stop playing your dumb blues noodling. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad everything worked out with your kid and that yeah, things are good for you. And it was, uh, again, great talking to you, Steve. Thank you for having me, Jim. Okay. See, I told you that was fun. I, that, like, I never hung out with him. Now I feel like we should hang out more. But I don't know if that'll happen. Don't forget, comedian and writer Michelle Wolf brings her sharp humor to HBO in her debut stand-up special, Michelle Wolf, Nice Lady, taped at the Skirball Center in New York City. Get Michelle's takes on a wide range of topics, including her surprising thoughts on feminism, Hillary Clinton, and more of life's everyday absurdities. Michelle Wolf, Nice Lady, premieres this Saturday, December 2nd at 9 p.m., only on HBO. Yes. Yes, I, I could play a little guitar. Clean, though. I'm going to play clean. All right? Clean. Clean.